Hi, thank you for clicking on the video and I hope everyone is doing really well. I am filming on the 4th of July and I also live in America and it's Independence Day here. So whether or not this goes up on Independence Day or not, happy Independence Day to all my fellow Americans. Happy 4th of July to everybody else too because it's the 4th of July, so why not celebrate everywhere that it's the 4th day of July? But that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about today. So today I'm going to be talking about something that I'm sure a lot of people wonder about, and that is how does fitness or exercise fit into recovery or does it fit into recovery? Now I've touched on this multiple times in different videos. It's definitely a topic that comes up. It's a point of conversation and I think it's really on a individual basis. Like I think everyone is different. I think everyone approaches fitness differently, especially those who are in recovery from an eating disorder. Fitness, exercise, working out, all of that, it is a lot of the times it plays a really vital role in not only the development of an eating disorder, but also what, like sustainability of an eating disorder, if that makes sense. It's, it's one of the factors that almost keeps the eating disorder around. It holds hands with the eating disorder and they skip through a field of daisies singing la la la. So when it comes to fitness in recovery, I think it's a really, it can be a really touchy subject because I think some people form an addiction. It's necessary that they work out. That's how they feel. They have this mental state where they feel as though they must complete these exercise tasks every single day. And it's super rigid and scheduled and they're like bound to it the same way they're bound to their eating disorder. That's how it feels. It feels necessary. I skipped class. I left class early in order to make sure I got my cardio in. Instead of taking a 15 minute train ride to school, I would leave like 40 minutes early and walk to school and walk back from school while carrying a giant portfolio bag and my backpack and a purse. And I was like a weird bag lady walking down the street with a portfolio bag like the size of me hanging off my shoulder. So like it got to the point where I was really inconveniencing myself and really putting a lot of pressure on me and pressure on the whole idea of fitness. I was taking something that's actually really good for us and I was twisting it into something that was actually detrimental. I was not helping myself. It was actually taking away from my quality of life, basically. And fitness should enhance the quality of our living, not take away from it. When it came to recovery, I knew I, I couldn't give up fitness, probably because I felt bound to it and I felt like it was necessary. And so I never stopped working out. Now, I do know that for a lot of people, and probably I should have done this, is just stopped working out and focused on just getting better. But I didn't do that. But I will say, through my passion for fitness, and as that passion grew, and it really developed into something that I really care about and really enjoy, I enjoy it, not because I have to do it, but because I want to do it. As that grew, I realized it's aiding in my recovery more than I thought it would. Well, I get comments a lot saying, how can you in, like promote fitness and working out while simultaneously promoting and encouraging recovery? And in my mind, they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand, like fitness and an eating disorder can go hand in hand, but fitness and recovery can go hand in hand too. Fitness is like a tool that can be used in multiple ways. It just depends on how you use it. When I decided to recover, like I committed, like this was it. This is the final time that I was going to commit to recovery. And this time I'm going to, it's going to be my life. Like I'm 
done playing around. Like I'm serious this time. When I made that decision, I was also still working out and I started to figure out ways that I can still work out, but I can be smart about it. One technique that I started to implement, and I think this is a really good technique for people who do not want to give up working out, but they also don't want to be bound to it. So I would go to the gym, I would have a set you know, idea of what I'm gonna be doing that day. This was back when I really just did cardio and then some leg stuff, <laughs> like I really didn't lift. And so I would go in, I would do a, like a warm up cardio session of about 10 minutes. And then I'd go do my pretty much useless leg stuff for about 20 minutes there. And then I would, in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to do an, an hour of cardio after that. And so I would start to do, you know, cardio. And the minute I started to get the thought that I should do more like I would be coming up onto that like hour mark and my brain would be like do another 30 minutes and I literally had to stop my brain and think to myself why why do I need to do 30 minutes more is it because I have the energy and I feel like yeah I can push myself today like this is this is gonna be like an accomplishment or is it because I know when I leave the gym, I'm going home to eat dinner and that scares me. And majority of the time, 98% of the times, it's the latter. It's I have to earn what I'm going to eat or I have to burn off what I've already eaten. And that's why I need to do those extra 30 minutes or that's why I need to keep going or that's why I need to do another set of reps. And if that was the answer, I stopped then. I didn't complete what I wanted to do in the first place. If I was 40 minutes into my hour and I had the feeling like I should go more than an hour and it's because of the eating disorder, I stopped. I did 40 minutes that day and that was it. Like I just cut it there and it was hard. Obviously it's hard at first to be able to break that habit and to just walk away. That's hard. It's just hard to walk away from something that you're like, I've got to do this. And if I don't, something bad might happen and I something bad might happen to me. I don't know. It's really hard to walk away and be like, whatever happens, it happens. And nothing bad is going to happen. I'm going to be okay. I'm just going to walk away. Walk away. The more you do those hard things, you make those hard decisions and your actions reflect those hard decisions, the easier it is. I have different goals than I used to have. I used to, you know, fitness was something that I did to stay skinny. Back in my mind, I always want to be skinny, but more importantly, I want to be strong. I want to be a strong person. I, I want that. And it's taken me a long time to really accept that I want that because by accepting that you want strength means that you are going to compromise on your desire to be skinny. Where's my priority? Is my priority about thinness or is my priority about strength? I have to give up something and that thing I'm giving up is the eating disorder. The eating disorder is telling me I want to be skinny and saying that's more important than health, that's more important than strength, that's more important than growing. And now I'm saying, no, I want to be strong. I want to grow. I, I'm accepting that I'm probably gonna be gaining weight. I'm probably gonna gain size. And it's gonna be hard to accept that because it's something that I never thought I'd want, but it's, something that I want. I'm pushing myself in the gym, but I'm not pushing myself when it comes to my diet. I'm still scared of foods I know are going to make me grow. <laughs> so in order to meet my goals in the gym, I have to eat more outside of the gym. I have to eat the right kinds of foods. I have to, I have to pay attention to protein. Protein in my mind has always been the thing that makes you grow makes you big and that scares me. Fitness has guided me to improve my diet. In order to reach the goals that I want to reach, I have to change how I'm eating. And again, it's scary, it's hard, but it's like you have to start figuring out where your priorities lie. And fitness has done that. It's what worked for me. And again, if you're a type of person 
who is not at that point where they can just stop mid-workout and walk away, then maybe just don't do it in the first place until you have developed the, the mental skills to be able to walk away, to be able to self-reflect in the moment. And that takes a lot of practice and that's okay and it's a process for everyone. You know, what works for me might not necessarily work for you. Recovery is an individual journey. We all kind of cross paths at some point, like in our our methods and our process. Like there are always crossovers, but no one's path is identical to another person's path. If you can honestly look in the mirror and say I'm at a point where I can stop myself if I feel like I'm going too far, then continue to work out. But you have to be 100% honest with yourself. You need to start thinking to yourself, what are my priorities? I have goals that I want to reach and in order to reach those, I have to change other aspects of my life. That's just how it works. I know that one day I'm gonna reach those goals. While reaching those goals, I'm continuing to conquer my eating disorder and I'm continuing through recovery. It's a, it's a vehicle that moves me forward through recovery. I think people have to re-fall in love with fitness. I think everyone who has become a slave to fitness when they have an eating disorder, I think the intention has always been good and I think that there is an enjoyment there and they've just been it's just been twisted and so you have to kind of re-fall in love with it fall in love with what it is what is it about it that you like so much some people's eating disorders tell them to run for hours every single day and they don't even like running don't do what the eating disorder wants you to do it's like find what you enjoy like just don't do something just because your eating disorder is like, hey, you need to do this because X, Y, and Z might happen and you're a failure if you don't. Tell it it's a failure for telling you to do something you don't even enjoy. Go do what you enjoy. It's an individual's choice whether they want to continue fitness, take a break from fitness, quit altogether while they're starting out in recovery. It's just about being honest with yourself, facing yourself, and being self-reflective. That's that's it. I literally just said three things that all mean the same thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you are not subscribed already. And a big thank you to everyone who is subscribed. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, comments, video suggestions, food challenges, anything you think that you want to see me do, talk about, anything like that, feel free to leave that in the comment section below and I will see you next time. Bye!